And we are live. Welcome, everyone. Welcome to this edition of Yankee Spotlight. I am so glad to see everyone on. The Oh, and I think I have... I need to close. I did a, a rookie move there. I had the browser open. <laughs> uh, thank you so much for joining all you early birds. I saw Grog the Devourer in here earlier. Karen was in. Um, of course, Backyard Bullion, Nathan, Glenn Cox, Silver Dragons, Barb Carbone is in the house. Good to see you, Barb, the stacking kid. I got a few mods. That's good. You guys can help me out. I don't think it's going to get too rowdy today, but you never know. So thank you so much. I'm just going to let people funnel in for a little bit and uh, give a chance, give people a chance to join the chat. I... I hope you guys can hear me well. It's about a hundred plus degrees here up in New Hampshire, and I have air conditioner blasting. So you probably hear a hum in the background. I'm not going to turn it off. <laughs> hey, stop struggling now. Good to see you. Thanks for jumping in on my stream. I appreciate it. This is great. Brave new stacker. How you doing? All right. Yeah, and I'm also testing out a brand new microphone, a blue yeti so i hope the gain is right i've been playing around with it over the last uh day or so and uh, i promise i'm not going to do any asmr so you guys can <laughs> you can relax but i think this is a it's a pretty good mic i hope hope things work out well and uh all right so we got a few more people in uh today is the fourth in a monthly show that i've been doing where i interview you know the, the movers and shakers in our youtube community you know, content creators that just in inspire me, enlighten me, maybe do the same to you, uh, maybe entertain us or even challenge us. Really awesome people in our community. Um, you know, people we may watch quite a bit, but maybe don't know uh, very close, you know, very well, and you want to get to know them better. So that's my goal with Yankee Spotlight, to uh, figuratively and literally shine a light on these wonderful members of our YouTube community. So I'm going to ask them some, some good questions, and you know I think it's going to be a lot of fun. And this 3 o'clock hour, or at least 3 o'clock Eastern, I think it's, what, noon for West Coast. I think it's 8 o'clock over in, in Europe and a lot of places, um, is perfect for my guest today, which you already know who it is, Backyard Bullion. Hi, BYB. How you doing? I'm very well. Hi. Ah, oh, man. Hello to so everybody awesome. in the chat. Yeah, there's a lot of people in here already. One million years BC, Starbuck, Jeff, N coins, PMU. Hey, man, thanks for joining. Andre G, look at all those people. This is a real honor to have you, man. Well, it's a, a pleasure to be on. Thank you for uh, the invite. And it's always nice to do a bit more of a live stream, as I don't tend to do very many of them, but I am trying to do a few more of them this year. So that's exciting. So, what, what, uh, what time is it? Oh. Where you're at. It's just a little bit after 8 p.m. Okay. in the after, well, afternoon, early evening, and it's a glorious sunny afternoon evening here in the UK. So we've got some lovely natural light flooding through the window. Oh, I don't know. I don't think my camera's flashing up there on the stream at the moment. Is it? Uh, is it? No, let me let me let me flip over to yours. All right. Oh, come on, man. <laughs> you threw some major bling on that table today. <laughs> I'm afraid so. Oh my goodness. Look at that. I hope that's presenting to everybody. If not, l let me know in the chat. I'm going to present right now. I think that, it should be coming up. That beefy bar on the left. That's that's a that's a re that's your 1 kilo bar, isn't it? You just poured. That's the one I poured just this week. Poured it on Thursday. Oh man. That's gorgeous. International stacker. How you doing, man? Hey, you're coming from Comic Con. I heard that. Yes, but you, you can't wish. You can't miss BYB. You can miss me, but you can't miss him. I know. I get it. <laughs> no co gimbals. Welcome. Good to see you. Jamie Coin Hunter, great to see you. Awesome. Thanks for joining us. We've got Backyard Bullion today, and I'm I'm showing the his uh his screen right now. We're gonna talk a little bit about those arrows. That's kind of interesting, but we've got a lot to cover. And Glenn, dude, you can't wow thank you so well, that's how you start the stream isn't it nicely oh done word 
That is that is incredibly generous. Jen is Glenn is amazing. He's a, he's a brand new mod of mine too, so I appreciate that a lot. Sorry you can't stay for the whole thing, but thank you. Um, so before we get really rocking here, um, I just want to say that, and I say this to everybody that joins me on Yankee Spotlight. You know, I try not to compromise your anonymity. Yeah, gonna I'm gonna push the envelope a bit, but that's not my goal. You can try. I could try. <laughs> if I get too far, if I if I ask a question you're not comfortable with, just say, I'm going to pass on that, Yankee. Sounds good to me. Is that all right? Okay. And if I don't get you to do that at least once, I've somehow failed in my endeavor. So, <laughs> so anyway, um, have you revealed your first name online? Just curious. Uh, to a select few people who I know and work with on a regular basis. And on YouTube? Rust, yes. On YouTube, you have. There's a few people in the YouTube community who'll know um, my first name, and there's a very, very few minority of people who'll know my first and second name. Well, we only have a couple people in the chat, and I can tell you my first name. If you want to reveal that now, I could call you that first name throughout the entire interview. I'll pass. Thank you, Yankee. <laughs> wow, that didn't take long, that did was, it? That was rehearsed, wasn't it? No, it wasn't. I was going for it, man. I thought maybe if you really have shared your first name, I might get it. No, I mean, it's it's one of those things that um, that a lot of people don't necessarily think about if they're going to go and start a, uh, a YouTube channel uh, about precious metals. It's important, and it's important to me. It's important to Mrs. Backyard Bullion. Yeah, and that's the way that we want to roll. So no, that's good. And you're spinning an arrow, and I think I that uh, yeah. I think I'm not going to push it. So <laughs> the range is a little bit fast in New Hampshire, but um, you know, give it a good old go. There you go. I'm going to open up uh, the chat. I'm going to open up the chat to questions later on for Backyard Billion. Later, uh, I'll let you know when. I'll let you know how to ask them. But uh, yeah, SD pass already. I know, right? <laughs> but uh, you know, right now I'm gonna I'm gonna turn the spotlight on you, bro. Right now, man. There it is. Ooh, I, think yeah. you need to, I think you need to oh, turn. Yeah. <laughs> there you there go. go. We're on, bud. Now I gotta say right off the bat, you have done something that many in the pouring community, at least, can only dream of. You quit your day job, didn't you? Uh, I did. Yeah. You went all in, right? On silver pouring and stacking and even YouTubing, right? Yeah. I uh, took a long, hard look at what uh, I wanted to do with the channel and with the business as it was as a hobby. And um, there was like, there was an inner part of me that was like, you know, this can be something that's bigger and sustainable, more sustainable. And uh, I would, I, I kind of felt like inside that I'd be a little bit disappointed with myself if I didn't try it. Right. And um, my position in life right now was very fortunate that you know we don't have, we don't have kids, we don't have that responsibility, that financial burden. Right. To think about and uh, you know got a very very supportive uh, wife and Mrs. Backyard Bullion, <laughs> and she was on board, although she was essentially. You know the financier, the but the, you know the financial backer. So it was very much like, well, if you're going to do it, you do it properly, and you do it with a you know with a business plan and a and a budget and an operating budget, and you know we work on that. And you know, it was very much like every month we we review the books and see what's happening, where it's going, and uh, and growing, and how it's growing, and what the projections are. You couldn't do it without her, I'm sure. No, she does so much behind the scenes. It's like you know any any small businessman will know and tell you that you have uh, so many hats on if you run a business you know right. your director your your personnel manager your logistics manager your r d manager you're the production you're the shipping the you know everything you do everything and she does that as well so that must you know, have been a scary thought. step though to make um it, it everything's scary in life i don't think you can do anything in life that's not scary then it's it's not really worth doing in my opinion like you know if you if you want to push the boundaries and do something that you, you love and enjoy, you've got to you work for it yourself. and you stretch yourself. Yeah. And I've, I've kind of, that was a, sort of a big change in my mentality and the way that I've been thinking about life in the sort of build up to even starting pouring silver and even getting involved in silver. Right. I'm going to ask you, what was just one thing? Cause I, I don't want to go too far. Away. What was the hardest aspect of, of going all in with this being a full-time career? I think the hardest aspect is, that 
you're you get you get committed to something financially emotionally and you know it's it, it's it's a train that you sometimes can't see a way of getting off of wow. so for me it's like you 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 say the phrase you're all in you really are all in because when you run a business when you really put something down to run a business you often are forecasting three four five years ahead yeah. and essentially for the first two or three four years you're not earning any money because anything that you do make you have to put back into the business to grow it or yeah. to you know to just survive as a business so you know anyone who, out there who who thinks that any small business person is just sitting at home raking in the cash and enjoying it is completely wrong and you know i i I worked out the hourly rate of, you know, what I was earning in that first year. And it was pittance. It was like half of minimum wage, if less, you know, and it's, and you come home and like Mrs. Backyard Bullion would come home at the end of the day and or end of a month. And you'd say, you know, I've earned, I've earned this much this month, but I haven't actually earned this much because I've gone and spent it all. So <laughs> it's like, all right. uh, that's, what's called a teaser folks. So I'm going to stop you right there because I'm going to save more about your pouring in your business later um, all right sounds but good I do, but that was good that 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 is definitely interesting but i want to dive into your channel first and your personal right. views on stacking too so guys in the chat i do want to jump out and say hi to a few more people that jumped in like m nice who said he's been looking forward to this interview thank you that's very nice um i think there was donald in new mexico thank you for joining us this is great. We have the incredible Backyard Bullion with us today, and we're going to have a lot of fun learning about him in a deeper way. Uh, get your questions ready. Uh, I'll let you know when to ask them, what to put specifically in the chat so I notice it. Um, we're going to break it down into three parts, his channel, his stacking, and then we'll get into his pouring business a bit at the end. So let's start talking about your channel. Go for it. Uh, I believe you started stacking in 2015, right? Yeah, like I seem to remember being sat on my aunt's sofa up in the middle of nowhere in Scotland and something had popped up on my phone about silver and I just then looked and I started researching it because uh -huh. I like coins. And, um, and it was at the time when spot price in the UK was £9 an ounce. I don't know what that is in dollars, but it's probably about $12 an ounce or something. It was... Okay. It was really low, and and like I, I remember turning to Mrs. Backyard Bullion and saying, "Silver's like historically low right now. You can't go wrong with it. Let's buy some." And she kind of looked at me a bit strangely, and then give you that about, look. <laughs> about two or three weeks later, we we committed and we bought a very small amount um, from Germany, and um, got it, loved it, put it in put it in a drawer, and didn't really think about it for about three months, and then took it out again and really, you know, fell in love with it even more and decided to buy a bit more and it, so it's 20, from there so 2015 yeah you launched a youtube channel i think it was uh, i think correct me if i'm wrong but is it three years ago this month yes uh um, the anniversary dude <laughs> thank you i don't remember the exact date okay in fact i think i can find out because if you go to social blade you can see what date it was 23rd of july so in fact it's two days time that's fantastic. 2016, third year anniversary. Well, now you're over 14,000 subscribers. I mean, yeah, I don't really know how. <laughs> I don't amazing. know how or why. Well, I think we do. In fact, I, you know, I see Bradley Height in the chat. I see Silver Steeler. Great to see you both. Everyone, um, hit a one in the chat if you're currently subscribed to Backyard Bullion. You're all enjoy seeing this pop up, I think. Uh, yeah, this is, he, you have an incredible channel, man. Uh, in fact, right here, while we're waiting on the, the answers there, <laughs> Backyard Bullion, yeah. You're subscribed to yourself, really? My personal account is subscribed <laughs> to my, my Backyard Bullion account, yeah. <laughs> okay, so one of those subs subscriptions are kind of <clears throat> questionable. All right, so th this, this logo I put right here uh, that I have the spotlight on. Yeah. Is that the first silver star you poured and I believe showed in your fifth video? Yeah, it's not my very first ever piece. Oh, okay. But, first star. Um, it was one of the first pieces where like, I just, I thought to myself when I poured it, I was like, I'm never going to get rid of that one. I love it. And I'm going to keep it because 
special. Uh, before that, I'd um, so I actually started with a, a, a cru- like a whip crucible and blowtorch, but um, I'm completely woefully scientifically stupid, and I bought a really weak blowtorch that couldn't get more than about. 25 grams worth of silver molten at any one time right. so i was like i was like well this this is just not gonna work i'm not having i don't understand how it works so i then found a furnace that mm-hmm. would do a much better job and convinced mrs backyard balloon to let me buy it and um and then it was like maybe two or three weeks after i got that that i poured that star and it was like one of the first things that came out that i was like wow i really like that i'm gonna keep it that's mm-hmm. a keeper but the other yeah, things I just remelted them. And it's your channel logo. So that's awesome. And it's my channel logo. And I, I'm a firm believer of like, I mean, it's not the most perfect piece. It's got a big, um, you know, indent in it. And it's it, it's not very it's not very nice looking. But for me, it means an awful lot. And so I think it's important to always remember your, your beginnings and your heritage. That's awesome. You know, I jumped on your uh, backyard bullion bandwagon, I guess, uh, nine months ago or so. Uh, yeah. And I and I really enjoyed that. I I have been watched binge watched your videos in preparation for this, and I've really enjoyed it. So, I know, uh, I noticed because you put a little thumbs up on them, and I got all of this influx on my comment section. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, it, it's fun to do. It really is, especially yeah. going back and finding out that your most viewed video was from a year ago. And I'm going to actually put the title right in the chat for people to see because this one was amazing. You had 273,000 views on that video. I, I have no clue how. If I could tell you how. I think YouTube that, just liked it for some reason. A quarter of a million, more than a quarter of a million views. I can only imagine what that must feel like. That Can, can you that, imagine, guys, in the chat, to have a video if you create content and have a quarter of a million? I mean, it's uh, the mind boggles that there's a quarter of a million people. Like, I mean, it's it's bad enough that fourteen thousand people have taken their time to subscribe to my channel and watch my videos every now and again. But quarter of a million people—that's more than some countries <laughs> have watched that one video alone, which is mad. The other cool. thing that, I mean, the other thing that I really I'm ama- I'm amazed about is the channel as a total has over two point one million views, which is mind boggling. It is. So, it's amazing. I mean, it's, I don't really understand it. Hey, Karen, I, I just a question, Karen, and we're going to get to his mold. So don't forget that question. But right now, talking about his channel, if you've got some questions for him about his channel and how he, uh, you know, creates content and all that, feel free to get ready for that. I'll tell you how to put it in the chat in just a second. But the video that means the most to me is this one. This was the one that I jumped all over back about, I think it was eight months ago when I first started watching your channel. I'll put the link in there too. That one, we had a nice little ramble over, didn't we? We did. Um, (laughs) I think you pinned my comment too. (laughs) It was worthy of pinning. Oh, well, it was was fun. We went back. And and that was another one. That was another one that went pretty viral. 190,000 views on it. Yeah, I enjoyed that one. Um, And that, that one haunts me though. Do you know why? Because I why mispronounced I mispronounced the Venezuelan currency. Oh, and it, so it's it's not the Bolivia, as I said in the entire video. It's the uh, Bolivar. So nearly every single comment. Oh man! Well, not every comment, but most comments are "You're an idiot. You said the name of the currency oh. wrong, and you can't go back and change it." So it's like, "Yep, yeah, I made a mistake." And yep, now it's had 190,000 right. views. <laughs> That's one way to get the views in the comments. Huh? <laughs> well, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Oh, it was a good, it was definitely a great video. I love it. And I love your channel. It's professional grade, dude. You really know how to do it right. Um, three things, three things that jump out of me uh, mm. about your channel. First, it's your enthusiasm. You're passionate about this stuff, aren't you? I love it. I do. I genuinely like, absolutely love it. I love creating these videos. I love just sitting in front of the camera and rambling and sharing my thoughts. I don't yeah. know why. I just do. You, you, you're a natural at it. You really do do it almost. It, I'll ask it to, I'll ask you right now. Is it mm. scripted? Um, the vast majority is completely unscripted. I'll be hundred percent honest. 
I will research something. I'll have uh, maybe four or five bullet points on a piece of paper. If Because uh, sometimes I'll start a video and I won't really know exactly the full content of what I want to talk about and what I want to say. And then halfway through the video, I'll go on a tangent, which brings me on to more things which I want to talk about. But then it will be quite disconnected. So I'll then start the entire thing again. But I'll have had a bit of a script from that first take. Oh, okay. So... Well takes no script. certainly but i try to get the entire video in one take oh. so rather than there's a lot of youtubers out there big youtubers small youtubers everybody will maybe stitch together a video from all of their little talking you know they'll sit in front of a camera and they'll just say sentence after sentence after sentence they'll then cut in to make their point i don't like doing that i think it's unprofessional and i think it's not it's not true because it's not all said in one go okay I so i just you. so i just uh, if i i, I hate you <laughs> no, I'm Thanks. kidding. I'm kidding. No, 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 but, no. I, I'm but, jealous. But seriously, <laughs> I'm totally um, jealous. <laughs> that that process takes a lot longer, and it's a lot more frustrating. Really? Um, like, so it is hard to do, and it's really it's a skill that you have to like just get used to and learn how to sit there and talk at the camera with no script for 15 minutes, and it it's hard to do. And even today, it's hard to do for me. And uh, the number of times that I'll have to retake a video is is pretty ridiculous. That is amazing. I also want to say one other thing that's amazing is Bradley Height, ten dollars. My goodness, thank you so much. Really, that's amazing. Thank you. Wow, that that just makes you want to do this all the more when that happens. I appreciate it. Um, you never seem lost for words. So I, I take off my hat to you, man. Your, your engagement is incredible. Uh, and I can't do what you do. I can't. I'm sorry. It's, it's, it must be an incredible skill uh, that some people have. You I have. think it's just, it's, it's like experience. Like you, you just get used to it over time. And um, the more you do it, the better you get at something. I think there was, there was someone that said, if you do something for 10,000 hours, then you become a master at it. You could become an expert at it. I think with someone who's talking about sport, if you do 10,000 hours of something, right? I God knows how much time I've sat in front of this camera talking, but it will be close. <laughs> so I, I see some comments in there. Uh, PMU says, do you script Yankee? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just don't talk to silver dragons about that. <laughs> or me. He, he, he can definitely tell everybody what, what goes on behind the screens with, uh, with uh, coast to coast silver wheels. Karen says, I can't even get 40 seconds. And silver dragon says, yeah, when you're a, a, a nine minute into the video and you mess up. <laughs> oh, I'm not, so I'm going to lie. There are, there are a few times when I'll put um, little edits in at the end. If you've gone through 15 minutes of a video and then you fluff your outro, I literally just, uh, I'll, what I tend to do, this is a good tip. So if you're holding things, do you want to put it back on my camera for a second? I will. Yeah. So if you're, if you're doing a video and you're showing something on your, on your video like this and you're talking around it and you make a complete fluff, uh -huh. it's really hard to edit the video because something's moving and people will see it. Whereas if at the end of the video, if you've done what you want to do, but you fluff your outro, but you're, tabletop is static you can just put any amounts of cuts in that you want so for me i don't just i don't uh, stop the camera or anything i literally just will keep talking if i fluff it i'll have a five second pause and i'll say it again if i get it right brilliant and you move on yep and that way you don't have to refilm the whole video put a two in the chat if you completely lost what he was saying when he was flashing that around <laughs> That was gorgeous, man. I got you, though. Yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. Again, though, you have to have an extra uh, set of skill that I think you do. I mean, your enthusiasm, your engagement, and the last thing that really, really makes me jealous, man, it's the lighting. Dude, look at yeah. that. Look at that. How do you – it's natural lighting. I can tell. It's a window, right? Yeah. Totally intentional, right? Yeah. Complete fluke. Okay, well, that's part, partly you can get away with that because this is this is your life. You can do this during the middle of the day when the sun is up, and like a lot of yeah. us that create content, we're doing it after we get back from our day job, right? Yeah, it, it's I know it's not easy for everybody, but I'm lucky. We've got a nice big window, nice view of the garden, and the sun is a south facing window, so you know, perfect. Can you give us a peek? Uh, I'm not going to. I'm going to pass on that one. There you go. Get another pass. Just. Uh, you, you never know what clever so-and-so out there might recognize either a the garden or like the 
landscape in the background. So he's good. Uh, guys. You know, you've got to be careful on those kind of things. Right against the vest. Very nice. Okay. So you say you're not scripted. That's fine. I get it. But you are structured, right? I try to be as best as I can. Can you tell us a little bit about this, the schedule that you do on a weekly basis? I think it's Monday, Wednesday, Friday, right? Uh, no, it's, it's Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Wow. No. Yeah. So Wednesday, I try and do Friday, Saturday, Wednesday. Sunday. Okay. Yeah. So, well, okay. Thank you for clarifying that. <laughs> so I looked at, um, so I'm a, I'm a huge believer in like trying to learn about things and research things and work out what's the best way of doing something. And when I got started, even though I like had like 50 subs or something, I was like, right, I want to grow the channel. How do you grow a channel? So I just watched video after video after video on YouTube. How do you grow a channel? And, um, you know, some of it paid off because you just do the simple things. You have a regular schedule. And at the time, I was able to make videos during the week because I was at home. I was working self-employed and I had some time in the week to do this. So I decided that it would be a good idea to stack up on the videos during the week, upload them, and then I could have some weekend time to myself. I wouldn't have to take time over the weekend to do it. Right. And the videos would just be out there and done. And to have them regularly is a good idea. Um, but obviously I wanted like to have a, a video midweek so that people weren't waiting an entire week for the next video or something. So right. yeah, I decided eventually on, um, so like in focus Friday, that's how I started having a Friday video. If you have a regular series or regular something that people will come back and watch, they will hopefully come back and watch. <laughs> so Friday was that, that logical that video. That was a big one for you, wasn't it? Well, it was just, it was a fun little thing to, to try and to do. And uh, it, it helps. And we've done 150 episodes now in a row, 150 weeks uninterrupted. Awesome. And um, it's pretty cool. Okay. So yeah, um, so Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday uh, is the schedule. Four videos a week is what I wanted to do just to help to kind of grow it, basically. The more content you do, the more the people will see. And, it, you know, you have to play a bit to the YouTube algorithm a little bit and it is it's a, it's a bit of a roller coaster that you can't get off sometimes if you um get that schedule you kind of have to keep it if you want to keep growing or keep doing what you're doing it's a like lot that, of people like will train you were talking about it, it gets going and it's hard to stop it get off yeah yeah and and that puts that puts stress on so that the schedule is hard for me um coming up with content is is hard like you know i'm, I'm now up to I'm just looking at my video manager on my on my dashboard and I'm up to like over 750 videos I think. Right. Um which is like you know how do you come up with a new piece of content every week four right. times a week? It's tough. Yeah. Um I bet you a lot of people in the chat can commiserate with that. I I see. 720 videos we're up to now. So you know we try you try and have themes of days so for me Wednesdays ter have turned into now this kind of topical chat day where we can just ramble and i can play devil's advocate and i can i can tease people a little bit but in in a kind of respectful and light-hearted way um you know just to challenge people's thinking and that's what i enjoy doing always love having like conversations down the pub with people about you know contentious topics and things like that i get to so that you enjoy doing that that's yeah. a, that's, a, <laughs> that's your temperament so that's so that's like the wednesday video friday is just talking about a specific coin Saturday tends to be a bit of a whatever day. So it's whatever takes the fancy coin hunting could be a coin review, could be a bit of a stack update, could be something completely different. Um, and then Sunday was always traditionally a hand poured silver kind of showcasing day. What have I been making? What have I made? Um, you know, showcasing the pieces that we've got currently for many, sale and things like that. Yeah. I don't see many content creators out there that have such a uh, intentional schedule like you do. I think that's a that may be something that us you know YouTube newbies out there right might want to take uh, stock of. It, it's a good a good way to approach it. Have something that's regular, something people can expect. Um, I think it's important because I've got such a diverse viewership. Mm -hmm. I do so many different things. Like some people will watch one of the Wednesday videos and they'll like the discussion, so they'll subscribe and they'll want to see those videos. But they won't be interested in handboard silver, so they won't watch Sundays. But then there'll be people who want to watch the handboard silver videos, so they'll. And so if you have it on specific days, those people will then remember they'll like it's I do it with the big YouTubers that I watch. You know, you know, every Friday is a 
How Ridiculous video. I watch How Ridiculous as a channel. They're fantastic fun. They drop huge stuff from a 45 meter tower on things. It's fun. And every Friday there's a video and I love it. So, you know. That's great. You mentioned uh, having a little ramble uh, at, at the pub or something. I think you and I have something kind of unique in common. Mm. We met the same person in real life, didn't we? we From our have. medals community, right? We have. He was in the chat earlier. I don't know if he's still here. Yeah. He's at Comic Con. Is International Stacker still in the chat? You and I both met him. As have a number of other people as well. <laughs> as as he, his list is growing. Uh, was he what you expected? And more. <laughs> he's, he's, uh, he's an interesting chap, isn't he? He is quite the character, isn't he? He's, uh, no, he's, he's my kind of guy. We, we hung out um, that whole, uh, whole day. It was really good fun. Yeah. And uh, he's, uh, his enthusiasm for life is, is hilariously great. Isn't it? I just I love it. Like, you know, what a chat, what a guy. That Was that in London that you got? It was, to? yeah. Yeah, I, I, I don't live in London. I traveled up to London. Where at area um, do you live in? Sorry, you, you, you cut out there. Uh, what area of England are you from? I live in the south of England. I'll leave it as uh, vague as that for now. <laughs> That's perfect. <laughs> hey, hey, everybody, uh, put put a one in the chat if you have ever met someone IRL, uh, in real life. Sorry, <laughs> IRL. Uh, yeah, I, I just think that's so cool. I've only had that uh, experience twice, so it's kind of neat. Um, it's interesting because I've met a few other um, few other YouTubers. I've met Numistaka numerous times, a few other people from the UK as well. And it's, it is quite funny putting faces to names, especially when they're faceless YouTube channel. There he so, is. CIS. How you doing, man? Good to see you. Ah, he's back. <laughs> he's back. We weren't talking bad about you at all. Not at oh, all. Yes, we oh, yeah. Are you kidding me? <laughs> hey here's a random thing for you um but when i was looking at some of the earlier videos you had a gorgeous uh silver ring on your right hand i think it was the middle finger and yeah. then it and then it disappeared for for like i kept looking through it and it was gone do you still have that or do you still wear it i do have that and uh here it is you guys can see it i don't wear it on my uh, videos for a simple reason is because what I'm doing with it right now is an incredibly common thing for me and it's annoying to me and numerous other people and any job that I've ever had I've always had professional feedback from people saying stop fidgeting with your ring it's really unprofessional so I, uh, I just decided that I would take it off every time because what I do is I'll take it off and I'll drop it and I'll put it down and I'll distract myself with it and um, it's just annoying to me and it puts me off doing my videos, so I just take it off and put it to one side. But um, it, ironically, it's one of the first pieces of silver that I actually bought, um, and I didn't really realize it was silver. So I don't know if you can see. I thought it was fake. I, th I bought it in an Italian market when I was 18, and uh, I just thought, hey, whatever, it's a, it's just a crappy old or you know cheap that, piece of tap. Is that 95? It, it says 95 Mexico. I have no idea how it made its way all the all the way over to Italy into a random market, um, but it's definitely silver. Once you've worked with enough silver, you you know, and like oh, it's definitely silver. And very interestingly, when I've been doing antiquing of my hand poured silver, right. and I've left my ring on this ring, yeah, and uh, liver of sulphur gets on it, it turns it completely black, and then you polish it, and it comes up. So that's an interesting way of testing. It's Is definitely way, silver. Was it, was it uh, antique like that when you got it? Yeah. Yeah, okay. wow. it's just like, it's a nice Celtic band, you know. I, love it. I don't know. I just bought it. In. I thought it looked really sweet. So yeah, thanks for showing that. Um, and yeah, other thing on your channel, I believe you've done some full stack videos or at least partial stack videos. What's your what's your take on that? What's your opinion on doing those? I think full stack videos is is such an interesting concept that um, there are so many different opinions on it. So. I don't want to offend anybody by saying this, but I think that when you've got a certain amount of precious metals combined with a certain exposure on YouTube or social media, that doing them is a little bit irresponsible. Um, especially like it, it can be seen to be showing off a little bit. So it depends on how you do it, I suppose. But for me, I don't like having everything out on show because it kind of puts... 
uh, you know, everything bare, laid bare to the table. I've pretty much shown a full stack video spread across yep. my channel. So I don't need to put it all on a table for people to know that I have gold and silver. And I especially don't need to have one video to showcase every single person out there who might want to somehow work out who I am and where I live to come and knock on the door and steal it all. No, so I, fair enough. I appreciate that. I, I know that people want to see a full stack video, um, but you know, I think everybody just needs to understand and recognize that um, not everybody likes doing that and um, it's not for everybody. And awesome. Just move, on, uh, just move on with it. I think that's, that's perfect. That, if you it's fun, see, it's if fun you to hear these different perspectives and I appreciate what you said. Go ahead. Yeah. If you want to see a full stack video, um, just watch like 15 of my videos in a row and you'll see the array of stuff that we've got. So. Well, not all of that is yours too. We're going to get to that in a bit, but I want to yeah. ask people to get ready with your questions. I did see one earlier, earlier on, I think it was silver Steeler who asked the question. So get ready, put in three dollar signs before your questions. That's why I can, well, Yankees old eyes can pick it out of the chat. So, um, before we get into that though, a couple quick ones. Um, You've been with Patreon from the beginning, haven't you? I have, yes. What but I mean? don't what? really... Like, Patreon was just something that, when I started YouTube, um, was just a thing that everybody was doing to try and get a little bit of cash in. No, I don't think I've got any Patreons at the moment. Oh, so okay. Just curious. Um, I think if somebody wants to... And, and a couple of people have said this on, on their videos. So there's a chap who buys uh, a Tetris piece off me every month. It's in my what I call my monthly Tetris club, and he says that's the equivalent of Patreon for him. He'd much rather, and, and I completely agree. Like, I think if you're going to support a channel, um, especially in our community that pours silver or something, then um, buy their silver or or do a super you. chat on, on their live streams or something. Don't um, you know? Even better than in fact a super chat if they produce something, if they make T-shirts or something like that, just right. support them that way. Support Don't that just way. give them cash because. Uh, you know, this, you get something for your money. I think it's, it's important to make people work for a living. Silver Dragons just made something very, very clear to me that I knew and forgot. But, dude, that's why he's Silver Dragons, and that's why he's my mod. You can't put $3 signs in the chat. Oh, <laughs> it blocks yeah. it. What was I thinking? Let's just go back to the three question marks, guys. I know that'll work. So three question marks. Thank you, SD. I appreciate that. Three question marks and uh, one last quick question before we take some questions. Oh, by the way, questions about his channel, guys, his channel. Do you have any YouTube sponsorships in the works? Um, so we, we're ongoing with the Silver Forum, which is a fantastic place. I mean, it, people don't really understand about that. So the Silver Forum um, sponsorship is, is literally like maybe a pint of beer every month it's not it we're, we're not talking like i get thousands of pounds or dollars or anything stupid like that we're talking like at, at most about five pounds a month in sponsorship you know so it's nice because it pays your membership fee on the forum um but beyond that no it's it's all my own hard work to try and do it the other the other kind of pseudo sponsorships that we get is one-off videos if there's um companies out there that want to essentially advertise via our channel um then they can and we've had people like powercoin and um, we've had other companies like heads or tails coins collectibles the statue makers and i always make sure though that when they're doing that that they're doing it for the right reasons that fit in with my channel so i'm not here to pump something i'm not here to make sure that people buy it just so that i can make money on it it's me showcasing something and if you like it great you can go and buy it so financially speaking you don't make any kind of significant again it's all about beer change isn't it you know you get a little bit of money in the pocket great fantastic it makes you feel a bit better about things but the long-term goal is more important for me having those business relationships is great helping other businesses is great so good yeah, that's, so that's one, what i like to think about so I don't question, think I, sorry sorry i didn't mean to cut you off no, so, so I don't think I'd like go and uh, get a sponsorship from one of like Dollar Shave Club or something like that. And just, you know, like you see on all of these or Casper mattresses or something, you know, it's not you're not going to see some of those type of adverts coming into the YouTube into my YouTube channel. It'll be will be coin related. It'll be something that I enjoy. It'll be something that I've probably bought as well, because a lot of the things that I showcase for these companies, I've actually bought. Um, so some, in that sense, I believe it. 
something you can get behind in, in, yeah, in that exactly. So Silver Steeler asked a question. He said, I've learned not to schedule too far in it ahead. Ever happened to you? Did so schedule happen? for in what context? Your videos. You're scheduling your videos too far ahead. Um, I've scheduled. So last summer, we took an entire month off and went to Italy for four weeks. Um, and I scheduled videos for four weeks, five weeks ahead of time. I, I, I remember doing nothing but filming videos for two weeks before we went. Filmed some, like 26 videos in eight days and uh, edited them all and uploaded them all and you know put all of the descriptions the tags everything scheduled them so they would all be ready to go and i wouldn't even have to log in to do anything and it would be seamless like i wasn't even away so i'm, I'm a firm believer of scheduling your videos cool good i want to say hi to rafe allman luke francis hey stacking stormtroopers in the house great to see you too um having an awesome time with backyard bullion we're talking about his channel right now and if you've got some questions put three question marks in and pop it in the chat around his channel we're going to move on soon to stacking uh nathan racher said backyard bullion are you going 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 to work with gold in the future or is it just too expensive we have tried a bit of gold already and um it was really really good to work with absolutely loved it we managed to create an absolutely stunning looking bar but sadly we contaminated the bar with some microscopic silver specks and here in the united kingdom to sell that bar legally i have to have it assay tested and hallmarked so it failed its assay test i want to get in yeah i want to i want to understand more what, about what that is but that contaminated yeah. your gold so the gold the gold had they described it as microscopic flecks of silver on the surface so it had somehow picked up from its atmosphere around my workstation oh. dust basically particles and you just basically have silver floating all around your house don't you yeah essentially so they they said that, that you know there are ways of cleaning that and being able to get that to a stage where it can be assayed um but we took the decision just to leave it the customer was very happy with the way that it was and didn't want it altering or cleaned or sanded down so that those particles would be gone and uh, and we and we thought actually it'd be it would be really good to be honest about the situation and just you know right. say that we we made a mistake we we didn't respect the fact that you know if you're working with a different type of metal that you need to have a completely clean work area separate work area separate equipment and all of that so we learned an awful lot from it which is really so really the dragon to... wonders if it was from the sandpaper <laughs> it, it could well have been but it's interesting because they said it wasn't um it didn't look like it had been smeared like the sandpaper perhaps would have been done it just looked like it had atmospheric kind of specks that have been picked up from when it was hot so it could theoretically be when it came out of the mold and i tipped it up onto my work surface there were just literally microscopic specks of silver uh, silver there that it just took on so, so i'm seeing questions from karen i'm seeing questions from grog i'm seeing and they're all about porn dudes guys you just gotta wait just a little bit longer we're talking about his channel and i think we need to move on because i don't think they want to talk about it anymore. <laughs> Go for it. i'm gonna talk about stacking now though oh man here they come. eye candy oh my word that is gorgeous so let's talk about your stacking. Um, from what I was listening to on your channel, I noticed that I believe your first, was it your first gold piece was a half Cougaran, right? Um, yeah. So my Did grandfather, my grandfather left it to us when he died, me and my brother. So it's actually technically only in half of it. It's a half uh, Cougaran, so I only have technically a quarter of it. Oh, um, oh sorry. A quarter Kruger and it's a half Kruger and split with two ways. Gotcha. Um, and I'm currently custodian of it. Wow. Um, but we've both said that um, it's not something we'd ever really want to sell. So it's permanent, perma stack for you, right? It's, it's just, it, it's not even counted in the stack. It's not it's it's like, too precious. Because it, it will never be sold. Like it's because um, he's no longer with us. It's like, it's, you know, it's, it's something different and special. So. Is he into stacking or coin collecting or anything? He had coins, but he wasn't really a collector. Um, he he travelled around the world so much. He was in the uh, in the navy in the nineteen forties uh, and fifties. He was a he was a doctor. He was actually 
an obstetrician gynecologist, so a lady doctor. And um, it was always very funny to people that he was an obstetrician gynecologist on a battleship that had 3,000 men on board, not a single woman in the 1940s, which was hilarious. So, <laughs> But wow. I mean, he traveled, he traveled all around the world. So he had like, he had fantastic old banknotes from Rangoon and uh, Burma and, you know, Japan and all of this stuff from the 1940s and 50s. And, you know, they, they spent a lot of time in Singapore in the 50s and 60s when my mum was uh, growing up there with them. And uh, and then he travelled when he was, you know, older and retired as well. And I remember always uh, like getting old foreign coins from him whenever he'd come back from a new, from his holiday or his travels or stuff. And uh, he gave me a, a, an American... Um, uh, walking liberty half dollar once as well and that was the that was the first piece of silver that i ever had so he wasn't oh. a stacker or a collector but no, I think but, he, but, but it appears that you know you got some coin collecting or something running in your family was, i think he was no. of that generation he was of that generation that you know remembered what real wealth was and you know he had they, they had real silver cutlery and crockery and th you know things like that in the house and it was I guess it was just another thing that he'd bought that he thought about and i don't know so i just want to shout out mellow stacker i see you in the chat so great to have you man really appreciate you popping in uh, talking here with the, the one and only backyard bullion uh we talked a little bit about his channel we're talking about his stacking right now we're going to get into his business and pouring soon but um you know let's talk a little bit about why you stack a little bit about your philosophy you know i have like a three type of stacker philosophy a, a prepper stacker collector stacker flipper stacker those those types or subtypes of stackers and i can't even oh my word you know how to distract me i'm just saying okay <laughs> i'm 80 wow. to 90 percent a prepper stacker but i'm going to be honest with you dude you make it really really difficult not to be uh, a collector stacker uh, <laughs> those are Gorgeous. Well, these are even I didn't even make these. These no, are just are now leftovers. They're leftovers, aren't they? This is just well, this is part of a batch of silver that came from uh, oh, that, my supplier, the European mint, and they were just like that in the in the bag of shop. You melt and that I down. Just, that's your, that's your, your fodder for, for pours, right? Yeah. I can I could use this for my silver pouring, but I haven't yet because I've I've been doing a little sort of experiment on them by leaving them out so that they um they, they antique, they blacken uh, tone. And they're turning really nice colors. So you're not, not much of what I am, a prepper stacker, you know, no, I, for like crisis or economic collapse, societal stuff. And I'm I never a, I never sell any of my stuff, really. Yeah. You're more of a, I'm, like I'm a flipper. Firm believer, right? I'm a firm believer that if the apocalypse comes, I'll be one of the first to die. So I, I just don't see the point. And that's no disrespect to, to you or anyone else who does it. It's just not It's just not what I think about. Occasionally, I do the collector stuff. I do. And, you know, it's it's beautiful stuff, right? Even if you're a prepper stack, right? It's just gorgeous yeah. to collect. It's fun. Yeah. Um, and I think there's a place for there's a place for all of it in, in the grand sum of things. And I think some people need to just remember that not everybody will stack for the same reasons as everybody else. And they just need to understand and respect other people's opinions on it. And it's perfectly fine to disagree with someone just as long as you don't be a troll about it. No, I agree. And and yeah. everybody stacks their own way. I do think that I, I wonder, and maybe you could give me your flavor on this, um, if it might have something to do with a little bit of the difference between the United States and, say, Europe, in I a sense. Like the, the, the culture of, of prepping is very much like an Amer a North American thing. And here in the UK, I think we're just... I don't know. It's just the culture is well. It doesn't matter, or or it won't affect us, or it won't happen, or it's. I don't know. If you do do it, then you don't necessarily do it in the same style as uh, Americans. I know there are people who will have like pantries full of tin food and water and all of that, but um, bunker and secure. It's <laughs> certainly yeah. not anywhere near as prevalent. So, I definitely think there's a cultural cultural difference. Mm -hmm. How other ways do you think uh, European stacking compares to stacking here in the United States? Well, I think the fact that silver is more expensive over here just because of taxes and the way that world works in Europe, um, that's 
a huge factor. Like the fact that we, the cheapest silver that we could buy today is about 18% over spot just changes everything. So, you know, like, yeah. So if you're going to buy it, you have to, you have to either, and I try and preach this on my channel as much as possible. You have to really think about how you're going to get out of silver at the other end. And then really the only way of doing it and getting your money back is to be selling on the private market rather than going to a dealer or an LCS. So if you are serious about short term flipping of metals in the UK and Europe, you really have to go gold because there's yeah. such what, a what low premium on it. Difference? Yeah, is isn't it more economical to stack gold? Totally. Like you can buy gold for two percent over. You can even I've bought gold for spot on the silver forum. I've I've mean, in fact I've bought spot uh, less than spot on the silver forum for gold so you know you can definitely get gold at a very good price and then you can sell gold to a dealer for 99 percent spot so in the big Ooh. picture how is is stacking more or less popular do you think than the united states uh, it's in way more popular in in the us i think the the mentality of stacking silver in the uk is is a bit ancient or a bit antiquated now people don't really they don't understand it and the very few people that i will talk about that with they don't understand it at all. They're like, but what, 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 do you, what do you do with it? I'm like, well, you keep it and then you, you know, sell it in 30 years time. And it's a hedge against inflation and the price of your currencies. And they're like, what? They just, they just don't understand. I've, it literally, had, right heads, it? I've yep. literally had some people just go, huh? What, what are you talking about? They, they, they don't understand. <laughs> Just today, just today, I was uh, at church. I was talking to somebody, and they they don't really know what I do, but they yeah, they said you you collect rocks, don't you? <laughs> yeah, no, I don't collect rocks. Oh, it was just so funny. Most I people think it's, don't have a clue. It's it's really interesting that the way that I think about it has changed significantly. So when I very first got started with stacking silver, I had a spreadsheet set up with my exact sell price or buy price and what the sell price would be, the spot price, and link to that. And I was like, right, okay, so if we sell now, we've earned this much money. But I don't view that now anymore. I, I view some of that now. Like, you know, if you buy something specifically to flip it, that's a different matter all entirely. But if you buy something like this block here, um, which, ounces. you know, you, this, this for me is taking the, uh, I can't remember how much I paid for it, but let's say it's 600 pounds. You take that 600 pounds now, and then in 10 years time, your 600 pounds you can use to buy some other stuff that you would have bought today. It's that it's locking up the money. I just see it as a little tiny mini house or something that you, you have, you hold, you, you own, and then you sell, and then you buy whatever else you want to buy within the future with that money in the future. Well, your point on inflation insurance absolutely resonates with me. So I, I totally understand what you're saying. Unfortunately, yeah. sometimes if that silver or gold shoots the moon, it may cost us, you know, four hundred and fifty dollars to buy a loaf of bread. You never know. Yeah. <laughs> no, definitely. I, I, I definitely. yeah, I completely agree. And that's one of the other things that I have said a lot on my channel that I don't I don't like that mentality. People want right. silver to shoot the moon. They don't understand that if silver shoots the moon, that's happened for a specific reason. Yep. And there will be a situation where people won't be able to buy their groceries because their groceries will cost a thousand dollars and they don't understand that. So they think, Oh, my 50 ounce bar, I've made $10,000 profit on it. It's incredible. And then they realize that they have to spend $10,000 on filling up their car with gas. And it's like, so true. you know, okay. it's not about the numbers at the other end. It's about having the money that you've got right now today, transported in time into the future so i just want to yell out uh hi to peter oro jumping in thank you good to see you um i also want to say hi to silver streak and let's see if there's anybody new here uh i think i already said hi to coin collector it's great he was very happy i picked this time this is the time i like to do yankee spotlight for people in the same country as our guests right now backyard bullion so before I move on to what everybody wants to talk about, I'm sure, is pouring in your business. Um, if you have a question for Backyard Bullion about his stacking and the way he goes about it, put uh, three question marks in the chat right now, and I'll try to ask it before we go on to pouring. Other people want to ask you their questions around that. So put your also, questions in. Also, we should say there's 37 people watching, but only 22 thumbs up. So... <laughs> 15 of you at least haven't put the thumbs up on it. Come on, guys. I totally guys forget about that, but thank you. I really appreciate it. Um, 
Okay, so one question before the questions start flying in for you is what piece of precious metal is on your dream list? Oh, it's got to be a kilo gold bar, isn't it? Who, who doesn't want a kilo gold bar? No, so, but seriously, that's, uh, I, don't know about, I don't know about owning a kilo gold bar, but I certainly want to feel one and see one and touch one and, and feature it on the channel. And there are a couple of bullion dealers out there that I've been talking with and hounding to yeah. say, look, when you've got one in stock, let me know because there's an opportunity there for a pretty potentially viral video, which is only going to be good for your business. No. It's a win-win. You know, like if, if I've got a couple of friendly bullion dealers who know that if they get one come across their, their counter and that they want an opportunity, why wouldn't they take it? Oh my word. That would so, blow up. I, I would love that video. You've got to get a brick. A oh, kilo of bar of gold. Yeah. And that's so that's the dream. That, you know, Buy I it or borrow it or what are you talking about with that bar? <laughs> well uh, yeah. yeah. That's the thing. So <laughs> I, I you know, I've talked with a number of different dealers in person. I've met quite a few of them and you know they, they say they have sold them in the past. And um Obviously, there's quite a few hoops to go through if there was a situation where they were buying one and then selling it to a customer uh, about whether the customer would be even happy for us to look to potentially feature it. And so there are an awful lot of hurdles. It's not just simply about they ring up and say, oh, by the way, someone's bought a gold, gold bar. You've got a weak window where you can come and find it and have it. Um, but, you know, ultimately, though, there is that there is a theory that if you've got enough money in the bank that you could theoretically buy a gold bar for whatever price you can get it, 1% over spot feature it on youtube channel and then sell it again the next day and unless gold has collapsed you potentially only Such lose one percent are you kidding me you try to flip a bar a, a, a kilo bar of gold uh, if there's no, it's gold someone will buy it there's a dealer that will buy it out there so if you've got if you've got like a you know if you've got like i haven't got that kind of cash if you have that kind of cash you could just sit there i'm sure that's what some of the big youtubers do like there's there's a few videos that went pretty viral of like the crush it videos with the hydraulic presses and they got yes. a kilo gold bar. Yes. And that's, exactly. that must be exactly what they did. They just, they I, I think bought Mrs. That Yankee, Mrs. Yankee would have my head. If I said, I'm going to buy a bar of gold and then I'm going to flip it. Oh, my tax, my tax authority would absolutely hate me for doing that way. Right. The tax. <laughs> so I got a few more questions. Uh, people are asking grog, the devourer, says thoughts on mainly stacking gold over silver uh, i so i think that um there's room for both but personally for the long term it's all about the yellow stuff for me the silver stuff is a means to get more of the yellow stuff Ooh. so buying silver now when it's when it arguably looks incredibly cheap compared with gold even more so now than it did two months ago is a really good idea. So yeah, you can stack silver right now, but for me, it's all about maybe in two, three, four, five years time when the price is right to liquidate that silver and turn it into gold. Very so, good. Graham Stacker says, what got you started stacking? You kind of touched uh, on that earlier. Oh, yeah, I was just, I just, I don't remember exactly how. It was wonders of Google advertising, I think. I, I had a pop-up on my phone or something talking about silver and um, how low the price was. And this was back in 2015. So I just kind of got, into it that way really I'd, I'd collected coins before but not actively like stacked or had precious metals specifically so luke francis asked the question that we actually touched on earlier luke uh, do you ever consider another full stack video go back if you want and check he, he actually backyard bullion goes into great detail about his opinions on full stack videos donald the in new mexico short says, answer is how high can you stack it how high can you stack it backyard bullion <laughs> um Oh, I don't know. It'd be pretty high. <laughs> That's good. It'd be, it, it's inflated because there's a lot of business assets that also need to be factored in. PMU asks, uh, how much gold do you stack versus silver? So what's the ratio uh, in your portfolio for precious metals? Uh, it's, ratio. Yeah, I'm just uh, it's probably around about 50-50, but it's a view to move it to roughly 90-10 in favor of gold in the longer term. So it's 50-50 in the sense that, as I explained a few minutes ago, the silver that I'm buying is a means to buy more gold in the future. So I see any, like this silver block, I see as a piece of gold in waiting. Maybe not that big, but a piece of gold in waiting. 
Hi, Austin's Coins. Hi, Michael I. Great to see you, Josh Cravens, Redneck Stacker. Thanks for popping in here. I'm a little bit behind on the chat. Uh, let me see if I can just slide up really quickly if there's any other questions. And it looks like we are good to move on to the next fun topic. And that is about your pouring. Oh, well, I do see a question. What age do you think you should start stacking? Oh, I don't know. I mean, it's it, personally, I think stacking needs to be put in context. It needs to be diversified. You can't put all your eggs in one basket. So I think if you're a very young person that's looking to save money for the future, I think it's important to try and save money to buy a house. Definitely get out on the housing market as soon as possible, like over silver and over gold, 100%. 100%. Get, that, yeah. get that house, get that mortgage, start paying that down, try and be as debt-free as possible, and then yes. look to, to precious metals and other things. And, for don't one... forget, and don't forget your your pension contributions from employers, and I think it's called 401ks in, in the U.S., I know that's not going to be the most popular thing for some people because it's seen as a financial product that's not real. But in my head, pension provisions, it has to be diversified. It can't all be about metals. You just got some great financial advice from Backyard Bullion, and it was free. That was great. <laughs> no, well, I think so, definitely when you talk about debt, get out of revolving debt, number one. Yeah, don't, don't, don't borrow to buy metals. That's just a recipe for disaster. Thank you, uh, SBC43. He's 13, by the way, who asked that question. <laughs> I, think, I think the answer, the, the, the simple answer is it's never too young to start saving money for the future. But be responsible with how you spend that money on what you spend it as well. Brog did ask, in America, the housing market is heavily inflated currently. Would you still jump in with that knowledge? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Uh, let's see. All right, so I think we're good to move on to your pouring business. So when we started out uh, today or tonight, in your case, um, we started with a question about your silver business. Um, if you're late to the stream, by the way, if you just joined us, uh, shame on you. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. No, no, I'm glad to have you. But make sure you check out the beginning part because he did uh, start talking a little bit about his silver business. And um, I think you just dropped. Is, is that... Uh, pour on the table, the big one, the kilo, right? Yeah. Is that's, that, that's the big boy. Is that your favorite pour of all time? I think it has to be. It, it has to be. No, just, I mean, your video just dropped today on that, right? It was uh, poured on Thursday, but I um, dropped the video today and absolutely I'm in love with it. That is epic. Seriously, I mean, how hard is that like a a one shot deal you go for it you go all in and if it messes up your your screwed. yeah basically <laughs> like it's there's so much silver here that if you want to try and melt this down again you've got two options you either uh put it in a furnace in a crucible that's big enough which the one i'm using isn't or you basically take a very high power blowtorch to it and just melt it down over a bucket over of how, water. how long would it take to melt that uh, it'd take an awful lot of energy and effort. I mean, there are people who do that to create their silver shot, um, but it's it's I don't have the equipment. So for me, it's very much a it's a one shot deal. You get it or you don't, and we did. We were very lucky. It's just gorgeous, man. That's the biggest you've ever poured, obviously. Yeah. Oh man, that is huge. Um, I, before I forget, though, Karen did ask a question. Silver Wheels, great person in our community. She said, what do you have more of, poured or constitutional? Um, so I'd probably say constitutional simply because I've got a 10 kilo bag of constitutional silver. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> that we bought. Um, so I have a fair amount of poured silver um, from community members predominantly. But um, in terms of like weightage, it's it, like, I've got a big bag of constitutional stuff, which we are working our way through in, in terms of collecting and then potentially flipping some of the more valuable stuff and then just having some essentially what ends up being really cheap um, fractional stuff, which is really hard to come by. So, Well, I'm going to touch on your journey, okay, to full-time pouring because I went Very back, good. I watched a really interesting video, which I'm going to stick right into the chat. Boom. 
I quit my job for silver. Great name. There's the link. If you really want to find out your backstory, you got to check that video out. But I'm going to take a summary stab at it, okay? So tell me how close I am, all right? <laughs> um, uh, you were uh, blessed with a loving and supportive childhood. Um, you had some uh, privileged lower education, including university. Uh, you got a job. I think you were processing uh, loans, higher risk loans. You yeah. went back to the university, you got your master's degree, and then you got into what was called, I think you call it business consultancy, whatever that is. Um, but it sounded interesting and quite frankly impressive. Uh, but it wasn't a consistent workload for you and you got bored. I think that was the biggest problem. Yeah. Um, you were unsatisfied. You even used the word, I think, grumpy in that video. <laughs> a grumpy yes. backyard boy. I, I was not the most pleasant person to be around. Yep. So you quit the job. Uh, but well, you quit the job, but not your career. And you became a, a self-employed business consultant, which can you so just clarify a little bit more of what that means, business yeah. consultant? So I don't, I, again, it's, it's a little bit about anonymity. So I'm going to semi-pass on this. Semi I will tell you, I'll tell you a little bit about it. So basically I was, I, I used my career was working within a business, making the business run. And that was on a kind of day-to-day -day basis. And that was essentially what you do. So you're, you're working within the business, within the management team to help a business run and keep a business running. So you work with managers and managers sometimes can be absolute horrible people who have their own agendas, have their own politics, and they just don't want to s want the business to succeed or anything. And I got fed up. I got really annoyed with them. I also got annoyed with myself as well because I wasn't really – I, I enjoyed the job when it was really busy, but in the times when things were not really very busy or it was a bit boring or slow – I would find myself just not really enjoying it and I'd, you know, be clock watching and wanting to go home. And when I did go home, I'd be bored and, you know, sour and horrible person. Okay. So, so I, that was, I took but, that decision to quit. But you quit and you kept your career, right? So I and, basically did the same thing, but then I, I, I chose what businesses I wanted to work for. So instead of going and working in a company with 10 horrible line managers, I chose... 10 small businesses that I wanted to work with that wanted to work with me and that I could kind of vet and say, right, well, this is actually kind of a nice person. This is a nice business. Um, you know, it, it's essentially, that's what I was doing. But then um, you became that, let me just wrap it up. You became a godfather and you yeah. were picking up some silver for him. And yeah, I so, think from the Royal Mint, right? For your godson. Yeah. So we, so we bought that silver by that time. The, or the first bits of our silver. And I thought it would be really cool to get him, uh, you know, a nice silver coin every year, like a proof Britannia or something every year. So that when he was 18, he would have this collection of them. So I was researching online and found yeah. loads of different YouTube videos of people doing reviews on coins and things like that. And then I saw videos pop up in the recommended feed from people like Hi Ho Silver, Mr. Zeke Losing Louie, um, numerous others as well. Who were making, who were pouring their own things, and I thought that's got to be, that's got to be better, hasn't it? Like if you make something for somebody, that's inspired really me. cool. So they inspired me, and I and I remember turning to Mrs. Backyard Bullion and saying, "I want to buy a furnace and melt some silver," and she looked at me very, very strangely. So, um, but we did, and I did, and then it kind of just went from there, really. And I was inspired to make videos by these people. I was inspired to pour silver by these people, and. Um, the rest is history, so to speak. There were, so, two, there were two quotes in that video that really, really touched me. One mm -hmm. was, um, do something today that makes you stronger than you were yesterday. And the yes. other so, one... No, it's, it, it's a bit more than that. So th this is a quote which I'm, I'm going to credit to Demolition Ranch, who, if you don't know, is a guy who shoots guns. Really, really quality channel. Love it. Very fun. And he's also got a vlog channel, which I watch off the ranch. Really, really good. Fantastic, inspirational chat. And he's got this motto, do something today which makes you better tomorrow than you were yesterday. So every day you need to think about something that you can do that makes you stronger, better, faster, earns you a bit more money, saves you some money, do anything that makes your life better tomorrow. So it's small steps. The other quote that really jumped out was you said, 
if you change the way you look at things, the things you look at and the way you act will change. Yeah, hundred percent. And that's that hit home to me with the growth of the backyard bullying business and working for myself instead of working for somebody else. Cause suddenly it meant more. Suddenly it was like, it was me rather than just working for another company for another business. It was, it was just like, I looked at it and it was meaningful more to me than it was before. And so I changed the way I looked at it and the things I was looking at were changing because they meant more to me. And, and I, I bet the, oh, sorry, go ahead. Well, I think, I mean, I, tr I try and take that attitude into any other thing and anything else I do in life, even if it's not work related, like, you know, it's just the simple things Like, if you, I don't know if it's, it's not relating to myself specifically, but I've got family members who were quite heavy drinkers and smokers and things like that. And, you know, if you just change your attitude to something, then you take that power that that thing had away from you. You know, it, it is a very powerful tool. It's, it's, grounded in what's called mindfulness so being aware of things around you and the way the world works and the way that things um you know interact with you and how they interact with you and i think it's an incredibly powerful way of thinking which takes a lot of um yeah it takes a lot of time to get used to and, and changing the way you think but if you just take a step back and you take that moment to look at things in a bit more depth it can really help really help and that helps it's helped my mental health as well like you know i was not necessarily diagnosed anything depressed or anything but i knew i was upset and not happy with life and and now i am and i think that's a huge change so there you go well you get some incredible words of wisdom there again free of charge wonderful thank you no really you mentioned um your family and i did yeah. want to i want to touch on it because I, that kind of inspires me too seeing you with your wife doing your coin uh roll hunts and and you know going through the constitutional you're dad getting involved especially with that um tetris uh yeah where you made he made, he made the wood uh mount right or the wood uh display yeah. with it that, yeah that's incredible what does that mean to you to have them help you out? oh it means everything like we've talked already in this stream about mrs backyard bullying and how much she does so i won't necessarily be going over the ground there but she does so much for it it's incredible the fact that like dad will get involved as well and will um you know just create some incredible stuff is is incredible it's lovely i even pay him a wage like you know it's like i, I don't i'm a firm believer of you know nothing should be done for free and yeah. so i i pay dad for everything that he, he does for those things he doesn't just do it and uh you know he does an incredible job and deserves it so that must mean a lot to you now you said he didn't have any children is that right no we are oh, blessed two -legged without variety. <laughs> of the two -legged. we we are blessed with two four-legged varieties we have eight small legs running around the house that's great you, can um what kind of dogs are they if if they're dogs right or are they yeah. cats yeah no they're dogs they are um they are basically greyhound type dogs oh so, wow oh yeah, he's I, checking I, on them right now. see if they're behaving oh there we go uh, so these males are our dogs and uh, this one here is called Pickle. Uh -huh. And this one here is called Bowie. Oh, and those are our two little bundles of joy. Oh, that's awesome. They're adorable. They must, uh, we, they must keep you on your toes. <laughs> they <laughs> do. They're both, they're both rescue dogs, so they've had some trouble with uh, backgrounds. Um, mm -hmm. So we're... We're big on that. We like we, you know, we we very much want to uh, to take all the dogs that we can see in, unfortunately. But we've only got room for these two, especially with the new one, which is Pickle, the big terrible oh. terror. <laughs> Pickle, the big terrible terror. <laughs> Look at her. <laughs> How old is she? She is about two now, about eighteen months old to two, and she's absolutely mental. So she needs running every day. And uh, if she doesn't run, she goes a bit stir crazy. But she's right. currently zonked out on the sofa, which is good. Back to stacking or back to pouring, I should say. Let's talk a little bit about your group orders because that probably uh, jumps out possibly more than anything um, on your channel is those massive unboxings you do and yeah. the group orders. I, I, how do you not be super tempted to just like, you know, 
take something because you're seeing some incredible stuff there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's would, interesting. But... The So one of the group orders that we did um, totaled 40 four thousand pounds so something like sixty thousand dollars and it was delivered in three separate parcels over the course of two days and you know it's like that's that's an awful lot of money but Just deliver it to you, come deliver to your home <laughs> yeah i mean you ask about temptation there i put a very funny comment up on uh, on on the silver forum because these orders were all organized through there which was Sixty thousand dollars and forty-four thousand pounds worth of silver has just arrived. I'm off to the Caribbean, except that I can't because I can't lift it. <laughs> They're not not exactly a dense stack, as I like to call it, when you have that much silver. Yeah. Oh my it, it's so yeah. I mean, it's it's, it's an interesting one, and I, that's that was the the topic of that video that got a quarter of a million views. It's it's heavy, and I think ultimately, you know, you go back to the question here, right? Why why aren't we tempted just to to, to run off with it? I mean. Why would we be? It's that's that's not really the right thing to do in life, I think. And if you want to, if you want to earn that kind of money, then you should earn that kind of money rather than steal it. So we do that. Um, those group orders not to earn money, and we don't earn money on them. And Wait. Wait. yeah, I appreciate that. But and, and there's a few questions firing off in the chat about this. I'm going to get to it in a second. But in all seriousness, how intense is those group orders? Uh, so it's it's pretty mad, really. Like if you so we don't really want to have, you know, sixty thousand dollars worth of silver in the house for any longer than it really needs to be. Um, so we turn around those orders literally as fast as possible within, um, sometimes within twelve hours or twenty-four hours. So when they do arrive, um, it's intense preparation work beforehand. So we'll we'll have all of the boxes done, all of the wrapping, all of the internal like bubble wrap and polystyrene beads and things like that. All of the order form printed out done ready you know so literally we can just film the videos that we need to film put everything in a box go down to the post office and get them in straight away and off and then the video will come out you know a week later so that again it's akin with like a full stack video we don't really want to have sixty thousand pounds worth of, of metals showcased and then somebody come knocking on the door so you know. that would be awful <laughs> yeah welcome so, come on look at our kitchen table um yeah. do you see that down those group orders are you picking up um so that it's, it's an interesting one because we have changed the way that we do them a little bit because of my own um personal tax situation and business situation um because when you get to those kind of sizes and doing that you know every two months across a year i think i mean I, it was all it was all um triggered by i got a phone call from my bank um saying was i aware that a large volume of money was coming and going from my account every like every month basically and i said yes i'm well aware of that thank you i run a business and yeah, that'd be a red flag like, over here that'd be yeah. a big red I, I, I think i literally put up a red flag on on their banking system so they then politely reminded me that it was against their terms and conditions to uh run a business through my personal account so i now have a business account and because i have a business account the i is then on you more from um like tax man the tax authorities and what you guys would call the IRS and you don't want the IRS coming and knocking on your door. So we have to like tighten up the way that we do them. So we're not going to be doing $60,000 unboxings, but we will be doing, you know, fairly decent sized unboxings still and providing that service, which ultimately is there to help reduce the cost of buying silver for people in the UK. Um, and contrary to some conspiracy theories out there, we don't get a cut. We don't get commission. We literally don't earn anything above and beyond what the customers want to give to us as tips, if at all. And the only benefit that we get is that we get to grow the channel. We get to do a ridiculous unboxing on YouTube. And that in itself is reward enough because it helps stimulate our business and grow our business. And that's the and, only reason we do it. And I appreciate you clarifying that because sometimes it's 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 hard to know what the ins and outs are. And it's nothing nothing wrong with earning a profit on what you do. But this particular thing you do with these group orders are not is not to to make a profit you're doing this to you know grow the youtube channel but to really help people out and be able to facilitate uh, it would actually the, it would actually okay. hurt us more if we did it for profit because it would then have to go through our business you know accounting oh, sure. and books and, right. yes. and that would just it would just not be worth it okay. so. so a couple so there are a few questions out there silver wheels karen says do you make your molds I do not make my molds. I buy them either pre-made from 
some of the great talented mold makers out there or I have them engineered by various different companies that can do it. So I do not make my molds. Peter Oro says, wow, I think he's talking about the group orders. All from the European Mint? I think you get them from all over, don't you? We did start with a different company called goldsilver.be in Belgium, but they've um, fallen out of favor a little bit. They've um, not been very good with their quality control, and I've had a couple of real hounding dogs from them in terms of quality, and uh, their customer service is awful too. So the European Mint is, in my opinion, the better company, and they're cheaper as well, actually, now as well. So Throw number three into the chat right now. If you have seen one of his group order unboxings, I really want to. I want to. I want to see how many people actually have. That it's amazing. Uh, if you haven't, you got to check it out. You know, and one thing most of my subscribers know about me is I'm not a big port guy, uh, port silver guy. I I don't buy a lot of it. I don't uh, stack it. It's just not part of uh, how I do it. But you know, and that may not ingratiate myself with a lot of people in the chat or or people in our stacking you know uh, community or maybe even you. So I apologize for that. But you are one of the few people that make it really, really hard for me to to stick with my uh, Yankee stacking strategy. You really do, man. You make some beautiful, beautiful things. Thank um, you. I, I mean, just gorgeous stuff. Like that, I, I mentioned it before, that Tetris-like puzzle. Mm. I really enjoyed watching that and seeing what you did there. I, and again, I'm close to my dad, so it was kind of special to see what he had done for you. Um, in the hearts um yeah you do the port hearts with the ripples but that mirrored heart dude that with no ripples that was amazing too i i had reached out to you uh beginning of the year i think it was about possibly getting a silver wedding anniversary heart yeah like that <laughs> look at that um i had my 25th coming up which happens to be the silver anniversary I know it's really annoying. If silver anniversaries were like a ten-year anniversary, you'd have we'd have a much more roaring trade in them. I, that, and that's sad. It's sad, but I've I've gone. I can't believe it. twenty-five years with Mrs. Yankee. Oh man, and it's awesome. She is just fantastic. Best twenty-five years of my life. But stacking I didn't, and packing once a dinner plate. So here you go. You can have oh, a, a drinks coaster. Dinner plate. You show the bling, man. Um, you know, I went with the local option. I, I didn't. I really, Sorry. I, you, you, whatever. Uh, you know, uh, the thing that, me. that some people, <laughs> the thing that some people sometimes forget is that, um, you know, life, life isn't just about making money and about pouring things and about people buying it. You, you know, you can buy my stuff, you can buy someone else's stuff. The, the world's a big place and, uh, you know, it's not going to stop my business. You know, I don't really... It's, it's callous to say I don't care. Of course I care. I like to grow my business. But at the same time, you know, what's right for you is right for you. And that wasn't right for you. And it's better that you support somebody that's local and you get something that you want. And that's the most important thing that you want. So appreciate it. And I don't tell I don't hold any grudges or anything like that. You know what? You're a very, very kind and gracious uh, guy. Uh, very kind to do this interview. I appreciate it. I haven't, I haven't bought anything from you yet um uh, but i have really appreciated all your videos and uh everything that i've watched has been top notch top shelf beautiful well, um, i think that's that's important to remind people as well like you know you, you don't have to buy the poured silver and in fact i've done many video saying why you shouldn't buy my own poured silver because it's not it's not cheap it's not an investment in silver if you want to support other other youtubers out there then go and support them you know buy their silver buy their you know, do their super chats and things like that. But, you know, if you don't or can't afford to do it, don't do it. It's it's just simple as that. You don't owe anybody anything. And it's important to remember that. All right. So we're going to be uh, fielding some of your questions. If you have any more questions around Backyard Bullion's business, his pouring expertise. Um, but before we, you know, before those things start popping up in the chat, I do want to ask you another uh, you touched on it earlier, but another big difference between pouring in the United States and pouring in Europe mm. is this hallmarking thing. Can you can you explain that? You did a good video on it earlier, but a lot of people in the chat probably don't know what that is. So it's basically an antiquated um, system of verifying that what we in the UK are selling is in fact 999 pure silver and 
it all goes all the way back like hundreds and hundreds of years. Uh, and the, the, the word hallmarking literally means you have taken it to the hall of the goldsmiths and they have marked it to say it's real. So that's where the etymology of the word comes from. And it comes in the form of these four little marks at the bottom here of your bar. So basically, you send it off to these companies, which are there to test your metals. And they then test them by either drilling holes in them and taking samples, or they're smaller pieces, they can usually test them with XRF machines and things like that. And um, once they've tested them, they then mark them to say that they are 999 silver. And it is the law. Um, there are some loopholes in the law. Like, for example, it does say specifically in the law that, you, you know, a bullion bar doesn't have to be um, hallmarked legally. But the question is, when does something like this become just a bullion bar or a piece of, you know, artwork or a piece of craft? You know, this is, in my eyes, different to this, which would be arguably just a lump of raw material silver, whereas this is something different. So, you know, you don't want to necessarily fall foul of it. Right. So that's why we fully embraced it and gone from there. Something like the heart, for example, is a clear cut thing that has to be hallmarked because it's not just a bullion bar. Right. So, yeah, it's it's an old antiquated system. But uh, it does give people a, a better comfort level with what they're buying or getting, right? Yeah, and I think I mean it adds. I think it adds a lot to, uh, you know, the it, it adds adds a lot to the quality of the bar. I think because it does give that reassurance to customers that it is indeed. Uh, 909 silver you also don't see these marks on a lot of handful silver in the world at the moment so it's kind of a unique thing for the uk pourers out there to have you know and compete with adds a little bit of value i think more than it costs because remember at the end of the day that actually costs me money to do so this hallmark on this particular bar will have cost me around about five pounds so about seven dollars eight dollars maybe just for the marking mm -hmm. so that's beautiful. So there, <laughs> Barb and Karen are going to have my head if I don't talk about the arrows, but I'm not going to talk about them yet. I'm going to bring it up. At them you got to you gotta wait to the end. <laughs> uh, but we do have a really, really good question from someone that looks like they're falling asleep. Zs. And I, I want you to touch on this. Do you think tax for silver will change after Brexit? And how will it affect your business? Actually, how will Brexit affect you potentially so right let's start with will sil will tax on silver change in my opinion no it won't because it's a tax that the government's getting and they like it and they like tax so why would they change it that there's just no benefit for the government to change it so it's mm -hmm. going to take a huge shift in political opinion for uh, that kind of thing to change and i don't see it happening because it's not mainstream so i don't think it'll ever change how brexit's going to affect my business is quite significant really um it will make things more expensive raw material wise so currently we buy the raw material like this silver shot from europe and because of different tax laws in different countries this is at a different tax rate in estonia than it is in the uk but because we're in the eu we can just bring it into the eu happy days but when we leave the eu um, that doesn't happen. So we would then get charged by our government for the privilege of bringing it into the UK. So automatically, everything will start getting more expensive. There are ways to mitigate that, but it involves various different tax registrations as a business that are far too complicated to explain in a stream here. But it's like it's just a mountain of work that I don't really want to do. So it'll be an interesting time to come in the future. But what I'm hoping is that we will have some form of trade agreement with other countries out there like America or Canada or Mexico or wherever it might be that have the ability to supply silver at a better price than we can buy here in the UK. So that's in a nutshell what I think. I think it's a, it's a bad, it, basically for silver stackers and for silver, serious silver investors in the UK, Brexit kills silver, and it will move people to investing in gold, 100%. Oh. Well, then we'll have to watch you pour more gold. <laughs> well, I want to I also reassure people that, um, you know, we we are, to a certain extent, um, preparing for Brexit in that we've, you know, we've got a certain amount of supply of silver shot. So those kind of price changes and price, uh, you know, price altercations that might happen in the future hopefully won't have to happen because we will be able to continue 
marching on with the business as is for a certain amount of time. So we'll have to wait and see is the honest answer. Bill but Stacker, no Bill Stacker says the Hallmarks look awesome. I still want a Hallmarks bar. <laughs> well, Mello, yeah. you probably get one. I think I know somebody who can help you get one. <laughs> they are pretty cool, aren't they? Cool. Redneck Stacker. Okay. Here, here's a tough one for you, bud. Go on. Who's your on. Your, Sorry, I'm your distracted by my bar. Who is your most favorite silver pourer? My, I, it's it's high ho silver, hands down. He's, he he can make that thing like a mirror, can he? Oh, I mean, oh like work. I I always feel I always feel like I'm being a little bit derivative of his work because I put ripples on my pieces, but his ripples are just something else. Like I don't understand how he does it, and he doesn't just do ripples like this piece here. He'll do different textures of ripples he'll do different depths of ripples he'll do different like finishes on the ripples and he'll change it midway through the pour so he'll have one effect half bar the other half will have a different effect he and is he'll a master get, he is and a he'll master get things uh, he does things that i don't understand like you know literally. and he holds i think he holds that as a uh, 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 close to the vest too he, he those are yeah. trade secrets i think right <laughs> oh 100 percent. so yeah he's um he's definitely the guy i I look up to most uh, in terms of, you know, the pouring side of things and just, I, I will credit him to the day I die. Cause like I wouldn't, without his inspiration, I wouldn't be uh, pouring at all. So that's true. That's, that's incredible. It's amazing how many people are impacted and inspired by others in the community. Um, it, it, it's wonderful to see. And I'm going to ask uh, just a couple more uh, questions quickly. We're going to run out of time. So if you have a last minute question for Backyard Bullion, this is your chance. Put three question marks in and stick it in the chat. But while we're waiting for those final questions, can you just let the viewers know a little bit more about this silver uh, forum that you talk about, what it is and what the benefits are for you? Yeah. So the silver forum is, um, it is a forum. <laughs> it's uh, an online community. Um, forums might seem old and antiquated and people don't really think about them anymore but it's essentially a social media site people go on there they'll talk about silver and gold uh it's got a pretty big membership base we're i think at over five and a half thousand members on there and um you know it's great things I, I actually use it pretty much to keep up to date with new releases of coins and things like that that come out because people are really good at sharing that information when it comes out uh, it's also got a really great trade section and sales section so you can uh, you can buy and sell for free and uh, it's really good and you should go and check it out. It's it's predominantly a UK UK kind of forum, but it's certainly got a really good active US member base as well, and it's growing from the US perspective as well. Um, so definitely worth looking at if you're interested in finding out more about coins and silver and gold and fancy things made of metals. Awesome. Do you want to rapid fire now? Are you ready for these questions? Here they oh, come. Go, on, yeah, go for it. How old are you? That was from Silver Dragons. I'm mid thirties, so semi pass. <laughs> semi pass. Oh man, you, you're you've passed more than almost anybody I've had on uh, Yankee Spotlight. <laughs> so that's awesome. <laughs> All right, Nathan says, what are the potential changes for your silver YouTube uh, to grow? I think that's what he's saying. Any cha um, challenge? Changes, sorry, potential challenges. 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 My bad. Well, it's an interesting one because I don't really want to grow it too much more. So. We're in a position business-wise where we want to stay small and sustainable rather than grow it to be bigger. I don't want to be working like my, I don't want to be working thousand hours a week. It's just ridiculous. Like I've tried it. I don't like it. I want to have a bit more of a kind of sustainable lifestyle choice. You know, I, I get to enjoy walking the dogs during the day. I get to be at home during the day. I work from home. I can choose my hours. I can do like I'm doing now. I can do a bit of work on Sunday evening um, so that, you know, tomorrow morning I can have the morning off or something, you know, you know, there's, that lifestyle choice. So I don't really, you're making, you're making us jelly. I'm telling you right now, especially I know silver dragons are probably, oh. <laughs> but it's, it, it is a lifestyle choice. So I don't really want to grow this business to be something huge. Um, so in terms of challenges for growing it, I think it's more about challenge of keeping it sustainable for the future. And that's how I see it. Stacking and packing says vanilla chocolate or strawberry. I'm a strawberry guy. <laughs> yeah, me too. I love strawberry. All right. So, 
I think Barb is going to have an absolute heart attack if I don't ask <laughs> you this. But, <laughs> so when you're not stacking and pouring, and I wanted to find out what you do for fun. So I again, I went back, I started looking at some of the older videos, and I found a few that I think I was the only one that commented and maybe even viewed. What is up with the longbow archery? Is that a hobby? Yeah, so I, I used to, uh, I say used to, I, I still do very occasionally, but I uh, shoot longbows, I shoot uh, arrows, bows and arrows. And I'll just put a link in the chat to my video, uh, oh, one of the coolest do. ones. Uh, I don't know if I'd be able to, if it, oh, I don't think it's a quick link. Is that, the, is that the one with the phone? Uh, yeah, that's the one where I <laughs> put my phone. <laughs> I put my oh, phone a hundred yards downrange, just thinking, oh, I'd get a few of them landing, you know, twenty yards away, and it landed literally one foot away from my phone, and it's pretty cool. I, um, I watched that video like five or six times. It was so sweet. <laughs> so when I when I got first started on YouTube, uh, I just uploaded a few of these cool videos of my shooting that I'd recorded, uh, just for a bit of fun, and they stuck on the channel. I've just left them there. So uh, yeah. That's basically, and that's also why my Gmail account is called Silver Archery GB at Gmail rather than Backyard Bullion at Gmail, simply because that was actually the name of my channel when I first got started. It was only about, I think, three or four weeks in that we changed it to Backyard Bullion, uh, but we were Silver Archery GB because my channel was going to be all about silver and all about archery. There it is. That's the scoop right there. I bet you most people didn't know that. That's awesome. <laughs> and you're pretty good at it too, I bet. How long have you, how long have you, uh, Done archery. I've uh, only about sort of seven or eight years now, so not like all my life or anything. But it's good. It's I don't have the time, sadly, to go out and do it now. The the dogs take up too much time as well as everything else in life. But uh, my one of my like retirement visions of the future for me is to have a nice garden big enough that we can set up a fifty yard range or something and just have you know like a nice sunny afternoon. I'll just go out and shoot whenever I want to, basically. So, or just sitting on the back porch shooting, you know, something like that. I've just got this silly <laughs> idea in, in my head that I can do that. Shooting off the back porch. Wow, that's awesome. Hey, I mean, that's, but that's all we can do in the UK. We can't, we can't shoot can't guns. Shoot firearms, right? Yeah, that's, that is true. Yeah. But that's pretty fun. And thank you so much for uh, just, just spending some time with me. It's been a lot of fun, I think. I think I better shut down the light. I think we're going to turn off the Yankee spotlight on Backyard Bullion here. There we go. Thanks so awesome. much, man. This has been a lot of fun. We learned a lot. We had uh, very interesting conversations, great questions, too. Thank you, everyone in the chat. Really appreciate you uh, taking some time this Sunday afternoon and evening. And, uh, well, I, I guess they'll – do you want to say goodbye or say anything else to uh, the chat before we end it? Well, thanks to you, but also thanks to all the chat. Like you guys need to, you need to support Yankee properly. Like he's a really good guy, really great channel, and I enjoy your content. I, I don't often see your content, but I often hear your content because I put playlists together to while to listen to while I work. So I don't necess necessarily see all of your content, but I hear it, uh, and it's just fun. I like it. So really guys, big. wow! If for whatever reason you aren't subscribed to him, subscribe to him. Appreciate it. Thank you. And thanks again to everyone for joining. I hope your day is A-OK, -okay, everyone. Take care.